Hello, my name is Dr. Scott Young, and today I want to talk to you about spirituality versus religion. Coming right up. So when we think of spirituality, I need to define the terms because people get this messed up all the time. Pastors, all kinds of different people. So let's just deal with some of these terms. Doctrine. Doctrine is a set of beliefs that are held by a group. Did you know the Democratic Party has a doctrine? The Republicans have a doctrine. The Boy Scouts have a doctrine. The Baptist Church has a doctrine, and so on and so on. We have doctrines. Those are just viewpoints that a, that a group comes together and decides upon. And even we go down to little small things like a family might have a doctrine of things that they would support. Theology, though, is the study of the word. It's, some people want to do this. It's a poor, uh, some of the poor definitions of that are the religious beliefs or nature of God. That is not what theology is. The study of the word or, or the Bible is the way we have to look at theology. Now, spirituality is, um, brings the concern of the spirit more than the body or the soul. The spirit needs to be on top. That's the spirit that lights your path, okay? That's the new spirit that is built when you accept Jesus, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions, and the body is below that. So when we have the spirituality, those are the, just the concepts, the understandings that we're thinking about in the spirit realm. Religion is the belief necessarily in God. But it's also the common beliefs that tie up a group together. So that's why a religion and doctrine can be kind of the same. Now, you can have a set of doctrines inside of a religion. But did you know that atheism is a type of religion? There are sets of, there are sets of rules that they have, and they have a faith behind it. Now let's talk a little bit about religion versus spirituality. Since spirituality is concerned with the spirit and the beliefs, the difference that happens are the core beliefs that one of one another. So there's a pragmatic set of truths. Now, pragmatism means a, a changing amount of truths. So those changes can come about because of a leader, or a group of people. So religion is that is more of that kind of pragmatic viewpoint of the changes that can happen. Spirituality is just, it can be uh, endemic or we can say it's around a whole bunch of different groups of people. Now when you think about doctrine versus theology, again, doctrine's concerned with the belief of the group, whereas the word is the understanding, I mean, the theology is the understanding of God. Doctrines are shared views of God, whereas the Bible makes its own claims about what God holds important. Let me give you an example of a doctrine. A doctrine would be that, now I'm going to give you one that actually perfectly dovetails itself. So we have the understanding that Jesus came from God and the Holy Spirit influenced the writers enough to say exactly what he wanted to say. There's this other thing called the Trinity. The Trinity is the understanding that all three of these personalities of God are melded together. They are three portions of him. This is when we have doctrine that matches perfectly up to that. But there are doctrines that kind of move away from one another. And they have, we have predestination versus, cre uh, versus free will issues. We have, um, you know, oh boy, pre-tribulation rapture versus post-tribulation rapture, and uh, so on and so on. Amillennial reign and other things. But what, one of the problems that happens, those are 
Those are doctrinal points that we're trying to explain things. But you as the body need to go back to what the Word says and throw out the baby with the bathwater if that thing isn't working. Because the Word is what gets me into heaven. Now when we thought, talk about doctrine versus spirituality, they're similar to a group understanding, but some doctrines are outside of the Spirit. What would that be that are outside the Spirit? Well, it would be like, you know, we believe that, that the church should do X, Y, and Z. And, and it's not really a spirit thing, it's just an organizational structure. Like we don't like to do this particular type of music or we have our setups in this particular way. I and mean, those are all kind of fine ways to look at that. So it's not a, a big problem on that one. Now, spirituality versus theology. Both agree that the spirit is above the soul, okay? But theology is an unchanging conversation. God has his own ways of talking about things. And when we over-spiritualize it, what we do is we say, well, Jesus really didn't die on the cross, did he? It's hard for me to understand that one, so I'm just not comfortable with it. Maybe it was just his spirit upon the cross. This is what the uh, uh, the Muslims believe, that Jesus' spirit was on the cross and not really his body. Actually, excuse me, the Gnostics believe that. But the Muslims actually believe there's some other guy on the cross that was really died for Jesus. So what they have is these spirituality points, but the word says about itself that Jesus really did. The real Christ died on the cross and he was God. Now, do you know that the Bible and, and which is our theology conversation talks about sex, philosophy, marriage, business, money usage, raising kids, nations, peoples, races, and why we are here. Now, that's a huge number of inf a bit of information. That's a lot of stuff that happens. But does it explain everything that we go on? And that's where we need to have spirituality. We need to, there are times that we have to, to, to look at it and God's going, let me give you an example. Who should I marry? There are two Christian women here, and they're both wonderful women, and I'm making a choice over that, let's say. Um, God's going, hey, you know, I'm fine with either one of them. It's nothing bad about e either one because both of them I love. But God might say, you know what, in this woman, I've seen the perfect woman in your life. It's not really stated exactly in the Bible that way. Or how about this? Who could you have friends with? Where should you live? Where should I go to college? These are all great soul-based questions that you're asking from your soul up to your spirit. So those are spiritual questions, but the Bible doesn't exactly answer that. You could go to Loyola, you could go to, you know, wherever, pick the place, or Roberts, or, you know, wherever you want to go, University of Northern Colorado, Carolina, whatever that university might be. And God might, is going to be completely in each one of the places if you've kind of asked him that question. And that's what we talk about here. So when you think about some of these ideas, the problem that we're having, one of the reasons why people get so argumentative on this is they don't even know the definition of the terms. What? And I'm going to leave you with this little point. I'm a huge and a long-term football fan. I mean, NFL's, NFL's just been in my kind of blood for a long time. 1978 is the first time I, really, 77 is the first time I started watching football. And over the years, one of the more difficult things has become, what is a catch? And as the, as the NFL changes the rules, pragmatism, it's a type of doctrine, okay? As they change the rules, one of the questions that commentators are say, bringing up all the time is, what in the world is a catch? That looks like a real catch of a football, but there's so many little nuggets about it related to you know, real-time 
uh, you know, frame, frame by frame catch radius that they're going through. And people go, man, I don't even know what a catch is anymore. And that's something I want you just to think about on a level that's just a sport point, okay? But we're struggling in the church asking these questions. And people around us are asking the questions. And I want to leave you with this. One of my, my front office person, Emily, who actually does a lot of our ministry kind of things too, this, had this question. And this is what she would say. She'd say, I don't understand this particular topic, especially when she was growing up. Very inquisitive, intelligent woman. And would ask these questions and people would go, you can't ask that question anymore. Why not? Do you know that God is not scared of your questions? I mean, I'm, I'm working with this one church and they're talking about the things that I might teach. If, if I've researched the information that I might teach, can I go to that church and say, hey, do you want to see my study material? I'm all right with that. And if I need to adjust it based upon some you know, doctrinal kind of viewpoint that doesn't violate the theology, score. I'm all right with that one. But see, there's nothing wrong with the questions, but we have to know what the definition of the answers are. By the way, you can Google all the stuff and you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. But when you get into an argument from now on, think about what spirituality and religion and theology and doctrine really are so that you have a good grasp of what you're actually asking and answering. So thank you so much. Subscribe if you like this channel, and we'll talk to you later.